He was one of UK's top comedians. In London, England, he had a show on Comedy Central. There's actually been a big budget movie made about his life. In his first year here, he was nominated for a Just for Last Best Comedy Show Award and a Canadian Comedy Award. They said when he came here that he would never be able to make a living as a comedian in St. John. He's proven them wrong. He's packed Harbor Station! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. James Mondra! Dr. Ansar Hassan. What about that? He's been doing stand-up for just a year. A year, and already he's as good as Seinfeld. <laughs> and just so you all know, we actually beat Jerry Seinfeld's sales record tonight. <laughs> That's how we roll in St. John. Um, and Sarsan, as, as has been mentioned many times, you know, he's a heart surgeon. He's really milking that shit, isn't he? <laughs> oh, I've saved hundreds of lives, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. He's <laughs> one of them. He came to me a year ago, just over a year ago. He said, he said, James, he said, uh, he said, it's been my dream my entire life to try stand-up comedy. Can you help me? I said, yes, of course I can, of course I can, because funny enough, it's been my dream my entire life to try fucking heart surgery. <laughs> so if you're booked in for a triple bypass on Monday morning, <laughs> bad luck, I'm doing it! <laughs> yes! I I've been looking forward to the show, I really have. I've been, I I've been working round the clock, I've been going around to different places, trying out material. I even did a show two weeks ago in Sussex, ladies and gents. Anyone in from Sussex? Yes! Oh, lots of people. I, I love Sussex. I have lots of family there. I, I go there quite a lot. I do like Sussex, but that's possibly because I'm a big fan of the film Deliverance. <laughs> I thought I'll go and try some new jokes for tonight. So I went to the uh, I went to the Sussex High School. I was told, okay, you're playing Sussex High School. It's sold out. There's 400 people. It's going to be sold out. I arrived there. I walked out on stage. There was literally no one in the audience. <laughs> I was mortified. And then five minutes into the gig, I realised actually it was sold out. They were they were just all wearing fucking camo. I, I absolutely love this. I, and I am well aware of the ridiculousness of this undertaking, because traditionally, you know, most of us, right, we're all the same. We're, we're all St. John's together, right? What we all do, you know, we buy tickets for an arena show to see someone in the flesh, no matter how small, in the distance, in the flesh, that we'll never see again, don't we? It's like, oh, well, I'll never see Seinfeld in the flesh again, so I better buy tickets. I'll never see Iron Maiden again in the flesh. Whereas, what's so wonderful about all of you being here is any day of the week, you can see this English prick ambling around Sobeys. 
with the flyers going, is, it, is the bread still two for four dollars? Is, is, is the bread still... Have you got the chicken that's on special? No, I don't want that. I want the one that's on special, please. And, uh... Uh, I, I, I feel like at the moment there's two types of people in St. John. There's people that haven't heard of me, and there's people that sick to fucking death of me. <laughs> yes, thanks for clapping that. Uh, <laughs> I'm well aware, I, I too am annoyed uh, that the fact I can't go into a single pub or restaurant without seeing my face. It is getting very annoying, isn't it? I, I thought, thank God for the mayoral elections. There's some more annoying fucking faces than mine. <laughs> Sorry, Don, darling. Sorry, I didn't mean. I wasn't. I didn't mean you, darling. He is a very, very handsome man, isn't he? It's a very handsome man. Very handsome man. Um, I do love this city. It's well documented how much I love this city. Uh, I've become something of a scholar of St John. I, I've done a lot of research about it. I read all the books about St John. Like I don't know how many of you know this. For example, uh, one of my favourite facts about St John is that the first paved street in all of Canada was actually here in St. John. Did you all know that? Some, some of you didn't know that, it's true. Prince William Street was the first paved street in all of Canada. Of course, it hasn't been bloody paved since. <laughs> Hope you're keeping notes, Don. <laughs> um, but it's, it's true what lovely Greg Hemmings said. It was an odd thing when I, when I first moved here, uh, everyone said to me, you know, why would you move here? Everywhere I went, uh, hmm. excuse me. <laughs> Just having a break at work. <laughs> what was that? It better be vodka. <laughs> it better be vodka. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, I knew I should have invited everyone from the three mile. <laughs> funny place, isn't it? Because one of the things about St. John, which I didn't know before I moved here, is of course, you know, everybody knows your business, right? Everyone, everyone knows everyone. Everyone's related, right? It, it's just a fact. Like in England, if you had a bad experience with a plumber and you went to a dinner party that night, you'd be able to sit down and go, you know, Doug Smith, you know, ask, if there's any Doug Smiths, that's a coincidence in the room. I made that name up. See, that's how, you wouldn't have to do that in any other city. You wouldn't have to offer a disclaimer. I could sit down and go, yeah, Doug Smith, terrible plumber, and everyone would go, all right, fair enough. Whereas in St. John, you mention that at a dinner table, without question, his fucking sister's going to be sat at the table. <laughs> question. Everyone knows everything. You can, in, in London, I could go out partying. I was completely anonymous. I, I knew hundreds of people in London. I'd never see any of them, ever. You never went to anyone. Whereas here, like when I first got here, you all told me, you all said, oh, go to the Three Mile, James. Anything goes. <laughs> Anything goes at the three mile. Now, one night I went in there for a quick drink, but unfortunately, Kerry Coyle was in there, so it turned into a bit of a bender. <laughs> now, I don't normally do this, just for the delicate people in the room, just to be clear, but I, I was outside, uh, sometimes it happens, I was outside the three mile, leaning up against the wall, weeing. <laughs> right? Weeing outside the right. I, I shit you not. Right, before I got home, my wife had had four text messages telling her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anything goes at the three mile, you told me. Yeah, anything goes, everybody knows! <laughs> that should be the new mantra for St John. Anything goes, everybody knows. I'll give you another example. Um, by way of a cheer, for example, like this would never happen anywhere else. By way of a cheer, how many people in this room know where I live? <laughs> right? My neighbour Jane, my neighbour Jane bought a pontoon boat. Some of you know what I'm going to say, that's how scary this is. <laughs> my neighbour Jane bought a pontoon boat, right? She said, can we park it at the end of your driveway? I was like, yeah, sure. I can't see any problems with that. Wrong. I couldn't walk into a single room for about six months when everyone goes, oh, how's the pontoon boat shaping up for you? <laughs> Anything goes, everybody knows. 
Mm. She's not shy. Um, I do love it here. It's a beautiful place. I, I had to get used to lots of changes when I first came here, lots of changes. You're probably aware of some of them. Um, the biggest change for me, probably, talking about Sussex, was, um, uh, I don't know if you know this, but in England, right, in England, if you went to someone's house for dinner, right, and they said to you, uh, would you like a glass of wine? And you said, oh, I'd love a glass of wine, thanks very much. Do you know what they would do, right? They would leave the room, and they'd come back with a glass of wine. No caveat, no buts. Here in New Brunswick, a whole different beast, isn't it? You go to someone's house for dinner, and they say, would you like a glass of wine? And you say, oh, I'd love a glass of wine, thanks very much. There's a sentence they will say that will make your heart drop, and that sentence is, I made it myself. <laughs> Delores, I don't want any of your just add water, poison, Kool Aid, moonshine, thanks very much. <laughs> Buy a bottle like everyone else, and they, they always do this thing, don't they? They like, and because I do this joke, right? Because I do this joke, I've drunk more homemade wine than all of you put together. <laughs> Because every house I go to, people go, oh, I heard you joke about the homemade wine. Wait till you try my homemade wine. <laughs> and they leave the room all like proud, right? And they come back in, right? And they've now seen it in the glass. They're slightly less confident. <laughs> they come back in with this glass of, they're like, oh, you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it. It's, it's pear and pubic hair flavor. <laughs> Wait here, wait here, wait here, and they go out. And they come back in with this glass of cloudy, musky, smoky, hairy liquid. And they hand it to you, and they say a sentence that you never want to hear before consuming anything ever, when they say, well, I did follow the instructions. i tell you the weirdest response I've actually had after doing that. I was doing a show in a place, a very glamorous place, a few months ago, a place called uh, Port Hawkesbury. <laughs> Has anybody been to Port Hawkesbury? <laughs> yes. It makes Sussex look like downtown New York. <laughs> i tell you how messed up this place is. The mayor, the mayor, of the town also happens to be the owner of the local doolies. <laughs> so actually, Don, if you want to be lucky, <laughs> buy yourself a doolies. <laughs> um, anyway, they, I, I, I've done it, that joke at this gig, right? And the, this woman comes up to me after the show and she comes up and she says, uh, she says, uh, 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 I heard your joke about the homemade wine, but joke's on you, Sonny Jim. I said, oh. Why is that then? And she goes, because actually now, we have shops you go to, and they make the homemade wine for you. I said, oh, oh yeah, I said, uh, I said, yeah, I think I've heard of that. It's called the fucking liquor store. <laughs> This is the friendliest place in the world, make no mistake. Uh, I, I actually had no idea how friendly it was when I first visited here. My, for those of you that don't know, my, my wife is from here. She grew up on the Kingston Peninsula. Yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, happy place. She had a wonderful upbringing. We wanted the, the same thing for our kids. We thought, you know, life in London was getting hectic and manic and we thought we need to, we need to move there. I wanted them to have what, what she had. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with too many details about my children. I know no one wants to hear about other people's kids, do they? No. You're all sick of that on Facebook, just reams of pictures <laughs> of other people's kids. You're clicking like, but really you're looking for the couldn't give a shit button, aren't you? <laughs> Because let's be honest, right? We're all amongst friends here, let's be honest. Kids are a bit like farts, aren't they? <laughs> you only like your own. <laughs> that is another weird thing about St. John, I've got to tell you. I don't know this, right? In England, right, it's only young people are on Facebook, right? Here, everyone's on Facebook, aren't they? By the way, Richie, how many people in this room have a, have a mother or father or aunt or even grandparent on Facebook? By the way, Richie. 
Right. Isn't it terrifying? It is terrifying because you go out one night, right, and you're out partying, and the next morning you wake up and you've been tagged in some picture, like, ah! But that's, that's a drink, by the way, not a, not a dick. No, <laughs> Things got messy at the three mile. So, not not that. Wasn't not not a dick. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> so, got mixed up. So, uh, I was talking about something and I went off tangent. That, that's going to happen. Small intimate gig like this doesn't really matter, does it? Uh -huh. What the fucking hell was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> friendly, it's friendly here, yeah, that's it, it's friendly. Uh, yeah, I, um, I, I, I first visited here, it was, it was, it was I guess, 17 years ago now, it was the year 2000. And um, I had no idea how friendly it was. My, my, my wife, she had, uh, she was obviously then my girlfriend. We'd been dating in London for a few years, right? And things had been going quite well. And, uh, and, and, and she said to me, you know, you should meet my family in, in New Brunswick, right? And I said, oh, I'd, I'd love to. And she said, well, why don't I go, I go home first. I'll go home first, warm them what you're like. <laughs> And then you come, uh, come, come a couple of days later. And I said, "Oh, perfect, right?" So she, she came home, and uh, and then I took a flight. She said, "I live in St. John." I'm like, "Lovely." So I, I arrive at the airport. I'm, I'm here. I'm feeling all ready and excited. And I said, "I'm here. I'm here." And she said, "I can't see you." And it's a pretty bloody small airport. <laughs> I was at St. John's. places with almost identical names. It's the fuck with English people, isn't it? <laughs> and it's not just me. I was at Montreal Airport a few weeks ago, right? And I was there at the gate for St. John New Brunswick because now I know what, what's what, right? I'm there and the voice on the tannoy came on and it said, uh, it said, uh, it said, the flight for St. John New Brunswick's leaving in 15 minutes. If you're flying to St. John's Newfoundland, it's at the opposite end of the airport. 15 people got up and started running. <laughs> so, uh, and then I'm like, look, oh my God, look, I said, don't tell your parents, they're gonna think I'm a total idiot, right? Please, you just stay at the airport and I'll just jump on the first direct flight. <laughs> of course, why would there not be a direct flight from St. John's to St. John, of course. I mean, I, I still haven't quite understood why it is that we have three tiny airports that don't go anywhere but fucking Halifax. Uh, <laughs> one big one that only goes to Florida. That's where we're all going. Um, so I came by Halifax and then, you know, I arrived at St. John Airport, but of course no one ever really arrives at St. John Airport, do they? <sighs> I circled St. John Airport for three hours, <laughs> then landed in bloody Fredericton. <laughs> Do any planes actually land at St. John Airport? I've never been on one! So I'm there, I'm there at Frederick's Airport, I get into the rental car and I'm, I'm driving along, I type into the GPS my, 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 my then girlfriend's parents address and I'm driving along and it says I'm 10 minutes away and I thought right I'll stop the car, do my hair, make sure I look presentable, they already think I'm a moron. <laughs> and I'm driving along and then suddenly the land ends. the bridges here. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I've grown to love the Grand Bay Westfield ferry boat. It's a beautiful thing. To me, it, yes, it is wonderful. But I, I'll tell you this, every other year that I've visited here for the last 15 years, every, every other year I would drive there and arrive at the Grand Bay Westfield ferry boat and there'd be a, a little sign up saying, ferry boat broken. <laughs> we need to raise another four million dollars <laughs> for another ferry boat. Four million dollars every year. Do you have any idea how many bloody bridges they could have built? <laughs> and here's an idea, St. John, right? If they're not going to build a bloody bridge, why don't they just get all the broken ferry boats, put them back to back across the water, we'll drive across the broken ferry boats. <laughs> There's a solution. So I finally get to the house, and sure enough, they think I'm a moron. 
my, 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 my wife's father, he's a man's man, he's a real man. And by real man, I mean a maritime man, real man. Right, like all of you out there, look at you, all you men out there. Like, Ugh. And he said, right, let's, let's go to the camp. And I'm like, oh, the camp, that sounds amazing, because I was kind of picturing, like, Camp David. <laughs> but I'm sure you all know that camp basically means hut in the woods, where you feel like you might be murdered. That's basically what a, what a camp is. So, the first day, they say, right, let's go into St. John to a restaurant. I said, oh, lovely, I'd love to do that. Sounds wonderful. Now, I was a bit worried about doing this because, again, England's not a friendly place. I don't know how many of you know this. If you go into an English pub, it's very aggressive. There's, if you make eye contact with a, with a lad in a pub, generally he's looking to start a fight. Like, are you looking at my bird? Did you spill my pint? Do you want a fucking fight? <laughs> what? How about you, mate? Like, it's three mile style, right? <laughs> So, so I thought, right, well, I don't want to get in a fight, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to keep myself to myself, as I would in England, eyes to the ground. So anyway, we go to this restaurant. Now, I feel like I know you all because I actually do know you all. <laughs> so I can tell you this. I accidentally got very drunk <laughs> because, you know, it, it was lunchtime. <laughs> and I went to the bathroom and I'm coming back from the bathroom and I'm thinking, right, and now I've had a few drinks, I better, really better not get in an argument now. So, because again, you don't get a rule book here in St. John, do you? No one tells you. It's friendly until you discover it for yourself. So I'm walking through the restaurant, trying to keep my eyes to the ground. And I didn't notice there was a man sat there eating a bowl of pasta with the back of his chair up, like we tell our kids not to do. <laughs> so as I'm stumbling along, keeping myself to myself, it is absolutely true, I accidentally knock the back of this guy's chair his face goes flying forward into the bowl of pasta. His chair then goes flying back. He hits the back of his head on the floor. I'm thinking, oh my God, I've really blown it now. First I went to St John's and I couldn't get over the ferry boat and now this is gonna be a massive fight, right? Oh my God, right, and I swear to God, this is absolutely true. The guy looks up at me, face covered in pasta and goes, sorry. <laughs> I thought I could live here! And 15 years later, my dream came true! Here I am! Um, I am still getting used to it, to be honest. I'm still getting quite used to the friendliness. It's a, it's a hard thing to get used to. I was actually caught out very recently. Um, uh, this was actually it was when the sun came out a few weeks ago. Right? <laughs> Remember that day? Yeah. Summer, yeah. Um, I went to the, uh, I went to the Sobeys in Quizpamsis. Anyone in from Quizpamsis? Good. A wonderful place, a wonderful place. Stupidest name for a place ever. Where is it? Quizpamsis. You can't say it without sounding drunk. Imagine getting pulled over by the cops. How much you had to drink? Nothing, officer. Were you speeding? No. Where'd you live? Quizpamsis. You're under arrest. Now, I'm in the Sobeys uh, with my, with my uh, youngest son, uh, River is his name. He's, he, he's, uh, he's two years old. Well, I say he's two. He's actually three, but he's not talking yet, so we tell people he's two. <laughs> it, it's awkward. Like, he, 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 when, when he goes to daycare, like, his best friend is this, is this little boy called Sawyer. Right? Now, Sawyer is only about one and three quarters. <laughs> River's three. We arrive at daycare every day, right? We walk in, right? And Sawyer is always showing off, standing there. Morning, River! How are you, River? River walks in. <laughs> so we'll stick with two for now. We'll stick with two. I mean, I, mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I'm doing all the right things. Um, you know, we're taking them to speech therapy classes and everything, you know. Although apparently the speech therapist said that uh, apparently I'm not helping by giving him nicknames. <laughs> anyway, me and Braindead Moron, we're in Sobeys. <laughs> I said that as a joke at home. My wife told the speech therapist. <laughs> and now I'm not allowed to go to the speech therapy classes. <laughs> Or indeed see my son anymore. <laughs> 
sorry, I keep going off the point. We're in Sobeys. We're in Sobeys, right? Now, we're doing the weekly shop, and I'm working meticulously through the list. Don't want to get anything wrong. My wife's cut out all the vouchers from the flyer, so I know which ones to get. We've all been in this position. I get home feeling quite proud, because I'm sure I've got everything on the list, right? I get home, my wife says to me, where's River's hat? And of course, being a man, I said, what fucking hat? <laughs> She said, the one he's been wearing all day. I said, oh, well, I don't know. Uh, that's that gone then. She goes, no, 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 you must have dropped it in Sobeys. Go back to Sobeys and see if they have a lost and found. <laughs> now, in England, we don't have lost and found. In England, we have a thing called lost and fuck it, I'm having that. <laughs> that's how it works in England. I've never heard of a lost and found. So, I actually thought, I actually thought that my wife was winding me up. <laughs> because she, because she's from here, she knows things, and because I don't have a rule book, what she likes to do is play little tricks on me. <laughs> like, she tells me things that are rules here, and I don't know if it's, maybe you can help me with one of them, actually. We, it's in, just a quick break from the jokes, I just want to check this. I, is this true? Because I don't know. My wife told me, she told me that you're not allowed to walk up or down King Street between 10 and 4 on a weekday if you've got more than one tooth. <laughs> is that... Is that true? Because, I mean, I've had a look. It looks like it's true. It looks... It looks like that is... Is that the rule? It looks... It looks like it's the rule, but I didn't want to go just in case. I wasn't allowed. I guess I'll take that as a... Yes, that's correct, James. <laughs> Just jokes. Um. <laughs> Where are we? It's so me, so I, I tend to... Uh, so, 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 so I'm like, okay, okay, so I go back to Sobeys and I go up to the, the customer service desk at Sobeys, Chris Pounces. <laughs> And the lady's so friendly. And again, again, I had no idea how friendly it was. And again, she was just recently. And I go up and uh, I said, I'm dreadfully sorry to bother you. Uh, I said, my wife might be winding me up. But do you have a thing called lost and found? <laughs> she said, yes, we do. She said, I have lots of different boxes for lots of different lost items. I'm like, wow, this really is the friendliest place on earth. And she, she, but she decided to prove it to me. So what she did, she reached under the counter and she pulled out a box. I swear to God, it's absolutely true. The box says on it, Lost Belts. <laughs> Who's going into Sobeys? <laughs> sitting down on the lavatoire. I'm going, it's going to be a big one. <laughs> Might need the belt off for this. Statistically, some of you are in here tonight, frankly, the people that... <laughs> I have another question. There, there, there's a couple of toilets in the Sobeys Quiz Bam City, in, in the gents, that is. I don't know about the ladies, I haven't been in there much, but... Um... <laughs> and, and one of them has, has, has not had a toilet seat for the whole two years I've lived in. <laughs> right? I mean, firstly, firstly, I feel like Sobeys probably have enough money like, if they don't, what they should stop doing is giving all their money to that limey prick, Jamie Oliver. <laughs> and give the good people of Quiz Pamsis a comfortable seat to sit on. <laughs> but my bigger question is, who's stealing toilet seats? <laughs> Who goes in, sits down and goes, that's quite a snug fit? Getting up, leaving the belt, and going, uh... <laughs> it's quite, a, quite, a, quite an enjoyable experience. Be ashamed to uh, leave without a souvenir. <laughs> There's your 70 stickers. Keep the Jamie Oliver knives, I'll just have the seeds. <laughs> anyway, sorry, so I'm at the counter. <laughs> 
I'm at the counter, and, and she shows me this belt. So I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I say that what I'm looking for is, uh, is my son's hat. Uh, uh, it's a little baby hat. And she said, oh, that'll be under children's accessories. <laughs> So she goes to get this out. Now, to get to the box, there's a box in front of it. Now, it's absolutely true. She pulls this other box out. Now, this box is bigger, way bigger than the belt box. And it says on it, I shit you not, lost car keys. <laughs> Biggest pile of car keys I have ever seen in my life. Question. Who are these idiots walking out of Sobeys with 10 bags of shopping and going... Oh, guess I'm walking. Well, you can't get a parking space there. I'm aware of this thing you've got going on. I know what you've done. I know what you're doing. Segregation, isn't it? <laughs> Segregation. I'm aware, I'm aware. I've cottoned onto it very quickly. Segregation, right? What you did was you rounded up all the negative people, all of the assholes, all of the people that didn't want to work, all the people that wanted to complain, all the people that wanted to be miserable, and you moved them all to bloody Toronto, didn't you? <laughs> That's what you did. And it's smart. Very smart. I, um... I will say that, actually not, there must be some people in the city, you know, that aren't awesome, but I, but I haven't met anyone that isn't. Everywhere I go, I meet people, I shake their hands, I, 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 I'm absolutely amazed. If I walk around London, in all honesty, 99 out of 100 people will be total pricks, right? In St. John, I couldn't understand why everyone was so nice. And then I discovered uh, where those assholes are. i tell you where they are. They're at home on Loyalist City News Chaser. <laughs> By the way, I'm, I'm getting a feeling. How many people here have been on Loyalist City News Chasers? And how many people have been blocked by Loyalist City News Chasers? <laughs> Me too. Those of you that aren't uh, initiated, Loyalist City News Chasers is a Facebook group where the people that we really don't want to be here are sitting there spreading all kinds of poisonous and weird shit. <laughs> and you're thinking, aren't you? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, James, give us an example. Certainly. Uh, this is probably my favourite Loyalist City News Chaser entry ever before I got blocked. Um, I don't know if I should use real names for this. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. John Osborne. Anyone know him? Someone does. John Osborne posted this. Uh, this was, well, it was 14 minutes before I printed it, but it was about three months ago, because that's when I got blocked. <laughs> right, so this is, uh, he's posted this in the evening. It says, uh, danger, danger, there's a man on King Street with a gun. <laughs> 11 minutes later, swear to God, it says, oh no, sorry, false alarm, it's a woman with a Don Air. <laughs> There's a great many, uh, there's a great, there's a great many reasons to move here. Uh, one a particular reason was, of course, that this is a very safe community, especially compared to where I lived in London. In London, I lived in a very crime-ridden area. It was so crime-ridden that actually the week I left London, uh, there were two things that happened on my street, uh, uh, quite extreme things. The first thing, there was a drug murder, and the police found you know, a dead body and, and traces of cash and drugs. So whoever did it, did a bad job. Anyway. <laughs> Another thing happened, this is absolutely true, you can look this up, the, uh, uh, there was a mob boss who fled Sicily during the Mafia clampdown in the 1970s and, and left Sicily, come to England, you can look this up, right, look this up, and come to England, set up a new identity, got married, had kids, right? His, his family didn't know, right? He was like the boss of, bo the, the capo de capo de tutti de capo. <laughs> to, to give it a local, he was like the head of Bacchus. <laughs> to give it a local spin. 
So he came to England and he lived un un unidentified for like 25 years. He was arrested on my street. You can look this up, right? Now, I'm telling you this because neither of these two things were deemed extreme enough to make the local newspaper. The week I arrived in St. John, right, I was like, right, I finally come to a safe place, a wonderful place, and I picked up the TJ and the front page said, crime! I went, oh no, not here too. <laughs> Underneath the headline said, 50 chickens stolen. <laughs> I thought, yes, this is the place for me. It was actually on the peninsula. The woman's house wasn't locked, because none of them are on the peninsula, in case anyone wants to rob them. <laughs> and she had a flat screen TV inside, right? They didn't touch that. They stole 50 chickens. Yeah, you can't sell a flat screen TV. What kind of messed up Sons of Anarchy style gang initiation was this? <laughs> but that made me very happy. Now, um, I love the Telegraph Journal. We're very lucky to have such a great newspaper in our city, doing great journalism, doing important causes. Um, and, and I love the things they've done recently on, on domestic violence, and, and they cover important issues. However, my favourite page in the TJ, my favourite page every week, is there's a page where clearly in the office someone's gone, we've got to do something on St Stephen. <laughs> We've got to throw them a bone. <laughs> and I've brought some of them with me. <laughs> this one was wonderful. This one was actually a few weeks ago. Uh, again, there's lots of important news in here. But again, we've got to give St. Stephen a page or they'll all stop buying it. This was my favourite. It was full page, full page. Burger King opening soon in St. Stephen. <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> now, obviously we can't judge. We're all excited about H&M coming, aren't we? We're all, yeah. We're all excited about H&M. Like, we're all, I was jumping for joy. But we all know we'll do the fucking target on it, won't we? <laughs> we're still gonna go to the Moncton H&M because it's what we know. But this, this I thought was interesting, you know, Burger King opening soon in St. Stephen. I thought they'll never top that. <laughs> I have to be honest uh, when I say I think this might be my favourite newspaper headline of all time. Full page. St. Stephen couple hopes to open pit a pit <laughs> Hopes to. It's not happening. It's not happening, no, no. Um, apparently all they need is uh, funding, investment, a location and the franchise. <laughs> But don't worry, this is the man, this, this man here, he is the man for the job. It gives you some of his background, which is, which is, which is spot on. He actually worked at the, uh, at the Lobster Grill in St. Stephen. <laughs> no, he did. From 1990 to 1991. <laughs> that could be two days. <laughs> Hopes to. Hopes to open. How did Hopes to become a become a newspaper headline? I hope to eat mini eggs out of Cindy Day's undies. That doesn't mean. <laughs> Maybe if I went to live in Saint Stephen, it would be fucking front page news. I think it's this time of the night. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm, I'm having, has everyone got drinks? Has everyone got drinks? Good, 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 okay. Um, what's that? 
Fucking hell, I mean, keep it short. I mean, there's a... <laughs> there's an art to heckling. And, and rule number one is don't read out war and peace. <laughs> That's what happens when you let PEI in. <laughs> I'll pay you $45, fuck off back. I do love PEI. It, it, it's a bit of a shock, isn't it, when you first try and leave and they charge you to leave, isn't it? <laughs> right? Like, if it was any good there, I'd have stayed, but it's like, okay, I'll pay you $45. <laughs> Did you guys actually hear about the, the thing that happened on PEI? The old, um, the old tourist brochure debacle? Did everyone hear about this? I, I, anyone that did, uh, PEI came out with a new tourist brochure, right? That's it up there, right? They go with a new tourist brochure. Now, um, now I, I was relieved when I saw it because I thought, well, at last, there's a tourist brochure without a lobster and a lighthouse on it, right? <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you know the story behind this, but basically what happened was there was some con controversy about this cover. Now, you're, you're wondering, you know, what is it, what is it? Well, um, it basically transpired that the man lying back, as we can see, has a massive hard on. <laughs> This is absolutely true. I'm amazed you haven't all seen this. This made international news, right? <laughs> it was on BuzzFeed. It was, I had friends in England going, oh, there's a thing that happened on the East Coast. There's like a big erection. Like, are you, are you, near, are you near to Prince of Everyone was talking about it. I have never once had anyone in England phone me and go, oh, we've heard the news. We've heard the news back in England about a fucking pit of it might be opening or anything. Right? <laughs> like, never, right? And yet... They're all calling me, going, oh my God, I heard about the thing. So you know what PEI did? You know what they did? They, they made a big mistake, I feel. What they did was they took thousands of these brochures, they'd spent hundreds of thousands on them, they pulped them all. They just, they just they got shredded them all, right? Big mistake, in my eyes, right? When, when we finally get one of the maritime provinces on the map in that scale, we have to own that shit. <laughs> That's what we need to do, right? We need to own it. You know what I would have done if I was the president or mayor or whatever they have on PEI? I don't know. <laughs> Chief Sheep, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> the head of PEI. You know what I would have done? I would have called an international press conference, right? I'd have got them there, A, so they can see how beautiful our part of the world is. That would have been good. Get all the cameras there, get this broadcast all over the world, right? I would have, what I would have got is got that cover, got it blown up big, right, on either side of him, right? And he'd come out for the press conference, and rather than being ashamed of it, all embarrassed, it's such a maritime thing, we do this, we're like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, it's a big erection. And it's not even, a, it's not even a, an erection, like, it's just, it's just the way, like, I mean, you look like you've got an erection now, mate, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean, it's just, a, it's just, well, actually, it is moving, to be fair, so... It, yeah, that might actually be an erection, so that's a bad example. There must be some men in the front row without an erection. <laughs> actually, no, there's not. Um, it's just... So what I would have done, right, get those things blown up, get them blown up, right, and what you should have done, cameras everywhere, broadcast all over the world, England, Africa, Asia, everywhere, right? He should have walked out right next to it and just come out. looked at it and gone, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Come to PEI. <laughs> so good here, second you get here, massive hard on. <laughs> right, we've got to own that shit. Don't shy away and be embarrassed, we need to own it. Can you imagine, Viagra would be out of business. <laughs> There'd be just old men flogging to PEI, paying their money, going over the fish and going, QUICKLY! Uh, it is a... Uh, it's a true fact. Um, everyone does know each other here. You, 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 you can't get away with anything naughty here, can you? Anything goes, but everybody knows. I'll give an example, you know, I mean, I mean, for example, I think the reason that marriages last so long in St. John is because you could never have an affair and get away with it, could you? If you can't do a wee outside the three mile without your wife getting three texts, how on earth am I supposed to check into the Howard Johnsons, fight for all those Syrian refugees? 
get to a room without everyone finding out about it, right? Everyone knows everyone, everyone's related. So let's face it, odds are, if you were quite enjoying an affair, if you did manage to make it into the Hojos and you were enjoying an affair, statistically, you'd probably find out halfway through it, you were fucking your aunt. <laughs> Can't put that on the CBC. <laughs> I'll tell you this, when I first got here, I did travel around a lot. I did enjoy uh, a lot of uh, uh, road work, doing a lot of gigs all over the, all over the province. And uh, I, I used to find it hard to know where to go. Like, I didn't know the right places to go. So what I used to do is I used to use a, a, a website called TripAdvisor. By the way, how many people use TripAdvisor? <laughs> Quite a few. Can I ask, do you write the reviews or do you read them? Both, both. What type of review? Those of you who don't know, TripAdvisor is a website that you can go and review anywhere in the world, right? So you can go to, you can go to uh, London and put the Big Ben, uh, five stars, and it formulates a list of the top hundred things to do in that city. And there's normally two types of people that write reviews on TripAdvisor. There's the frustrated novelists, like her at the back, right, in these long, <laughs> drawn-out things. And there's other people that just go on and put, it's shit. Um, but I found that TripAdvisor wasn't very reliable. I couldn't find the right places to go. So what I've done tonight, just for you, right, is I've brought with me some of my favourite St. John TripAdvisor reviews. And you can tell me how accurate they are. Are we down with this, St. John? OK, here we go, right? Here we go. Right, who can guess, who can guess what, according to the votes on TripAdvisor, what is the number one thing to do in St. John, apart from the three miles? Drink beer? Sorry? What? Reversing falls should be not even in the top nine. I'll tell you what it is, Irving Nature Trail. I, I wish I wholeheartedly agree with it. It's a beautiful spot. We're very lucky to have it. I love the opening. There's lots of obviously wonderful reviews to justify its number one spot. Uh, uh, someone here has put, uh, love the trails. <laughs> Informative. Someone else has put uh, seaside nature. <laughs> this is a bit of an odd one. Uh, this is uh, it's actually Doreen. She's from here, she's from St. John. She's put uh, her review uh, of Irving Nature Trail simply says, lovely nature and bushy easy access. <laughs> Sounds more like a Tinder review, doesn't it? <laughs> and there's lots of five-star reviews on here, obviously, to justify its number one spot. I mean, there's one here that says, uh, five stars. It says, uh, one of my favourite places to go with my kids. I'm never happier than when I'm at Irving Nature Trail. That was mine! <laughs> I do it too. But, um... That makes sense, lots of five-star reviews. Well, I think what we don't want on True Advisor, what we don't want is, uh, is Dave from Toronto. <laughs> Dave from Toronto coming in, visiting our nature trail, giving it one star, subject line, disappointed. <laughs> Ooh. What could possibly have gone wrong? Let's find out, shall we? I was visiting St. John on business and had heard wonderful things about the Irving Nature Trail. However, when I arrived, it was raining. <laughs> it's not weather advisor, you prick! <laughs> Piss off back to Toronto. Number two, any guesses? The three mile? <laughs> Wait, what's that? Zoo, it should be Cherrybrook Zoo, that's sixth. I too like that. I will read that for you in a minute. Um, number two is actually a Rockwood Park golf course, which again, I do love, I do love. Um, and again, it's a wonderful thing that people come here and enjoy our golf course. Um, Stuart from Vancouver was less impressed. He again was here on business. He has given our golf course one star, and he's put this. Um, I planned a big day out at Rockwood Park golf course, having heard it was a must-see attraction. However, there is nothing to do here if you don't like golf. <laughs> A 
The third thing is actually is actually Rockwood Park itself, which again, huge fan of, uh, beautiful walk around. Um, and again, it is mostly positive reviews uh, to obviously justify its number, number three spot. There is one naysayer amongst all of the glory that we can celebrate. Uh, I wish this one would be deleted. Uh, uh, I'll read this for you. I'll read the, the subject line as it's written, okay? I'll read the subject line. This person is so angry they've not even uh, given it a star rating. So I'll read the, 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 the subject line. It goes like this. <laughs> That's not an orgasm, by the way. It's a, it's a sigh, the word sigh in asterisks is. It says, Ugh, park is fine, but the people, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Bit snobby. I'll read on. Now, don't shoot the messenger. I'll read on. This is located in our north end, where the low-income housing is. If you're looking for a nice time with the kids, there is a play park, trails, and even animals. But it is highly overrated, as it tends to be dirty and run down, mainly due to all the poor people that go here, <laughs> who are on welfare. I don't go because I don't want to see them. <laughs> now, you won't be surprised to hear that this asshole lives in Rosso. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, the last one I'll read is actually one of my favorite places, uh, Cherry Brook Zoo. Fans of Cherry Brook Zoo in the house? Yes! We love the Cherry Brook Zoo. I, uh, I actually took my son there and all his school friends for his fifth uh, birthday party to Cherry Brook Zoo. They had a wonderful time. They really enjoyed seeing both animals. <laughs> I, I think the day we went, it was a cat and a snake. Um, <laughs> but between you and I, I'm not sure they were working there, to be honest. Um, Joking, love it, love it there. Um, now again, there's some naysayers, there's some people from here that don't like it and are critical of it. I think it's beautiful. Second, the summer holidays start, I will be back at Cherry Brook Zoo. Um, now, there was one review on here, which I have to tell you is my favorite TripAdvisor review of all time. This review uh, was written by Pat from Sussex. <laughs> like she can judge. <laughs> Pat from Sus now I will say this about True Advisor. I might not like the opinions that people have on here. I might think they're stupid or they're wrong, right? But at least it's up to the minute information, isn't it? Like you're an idiot from Toronto and you come and it's raining so you complain. You might be a fool, but at least it's up to the minute, okay? With that in mind, I'd like to read you Pat from Sussex's review of Cherry Brook Zoo. The one and only time I went there, which was about 38 years ago, <laughs> What the hell went down 38 years ago that's worth saving till now? This better be bloody good, Pat. You better have been, I don't know, fingered by a panda or something. Let's find out, shall we? The one and only time I went there, which was about 38 years ago, the fence was a bit loose around the lions. <laughs> the lions charged at the fence and it moved a little bit. <laughs> My son was two at the time in a stroller and it scared us so much we never went back. He's 40 now! I think it's time to let it go, Pat! I mean, I hold a grudge as much as the next man, but 40 years over a wobbly fence? And what the hell was Pat thinking, right? All those years ago, driving back to Sussex on the highway with this pathetic two-year-old in the back crying over a wobbly fence. And she's driving along on the highway, livid, 
Bloody Cherry Brook Zoo. Wobbly fence. If only there was some kind of public forum with which I could share this information. And she bided her time. <laughs> for 38 long years. And two years ago, when the internet arrived in Sussex. <laughs> when at last I shall have my say. <sighs> Triple advisor. Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of words differences here that uh, I've had to get used to, uh, as well as everything else. Lot, you're probably aware of lots of the word differences, like you say sidewalk, I say pavement. Um, and if you're aware, like uh, like you're wearing a nice a nice sweater, right? In England, a sweater is a jumper. When and here, that's a suicide person, isn't it? <laughs> Different words, different... Because again, you don't get a rule book. Like, right when I arrived here, nobody told me, for example, that, um, no one told me that the, uh, that, as I understand it now, that I believe here, the word fag is a homophobic term for homosexuals. In England, a fag is a cigarette. Do you know that? Thanks for telling me. <laughs> I arrived here trying to tell people how much I smoke, by saying that my lips have been on the butts of more fags than Freddie Mercury. <laughs> oh, I know! <laughs> the other one that, uh, that stuck me was these trousers in England. Here they're pants, right? You call these pants? In England, pants are the underpants. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> that made my first doctor's appointment pretty awkward. <laughs> when I went to see Dr. Daniel Scott at Grand Bay Westfield Doctor's Surgery. We're sticking for real names until the lawsuit plays out. <laughs> I went to see Dr. Scott with my, uh, with my injured knee, and he said, take off your pants, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> it was my first week here, right? I didn't know, right? I thought he was probably gonna do, like, the full checkup. <laughs> You know, like the tappy tappy? <laughs> like new in town, like, ta you, you had the tappy tappy, sir, yeah, right? You know, when he kind of goes, uh, he goes cough and he goes tap tap, right? <laughs> it's not just me, is it? Someone else must have had the <laughs> tappy tappy, my boy. Is it just me going around on a tour of doctor's offices having my balls broke? <laughs> I thought he was doing the tappy tappy, right? So anyway. He leaves the room. I take off my, my trousers, as we call them in a civilised land. <laughs> and my pants, or as you would call them, underpants. And I'm standing there in a, in a stranger's office, um, <laughs> without my trousers on. And it's quite awkward. Those men in here that have been in for their tappy tappies will know. It's difficult. Um, now, I realised I was wearing quite a long T-shirt that covered up the goods, as no one has ever called them. <laughs> and I thought, this is going to be awkward, because when they come in, um, ladies might alone, when they do the tappy-tappy, they make conversation, they say cough, and they go in quickly, tap-tap, like that, right? So I thought, if I'm having to kind of, like, lift my T-shirt, we might do this kind of awkward, like, I, I go like this, like... <laughs> Right? And at the same time he goes in, we might have this headbutt moment. All of you want to be like dizzy, banging heads with all the things. Things. So, um, I tell you this, because I don't mean to judge me for what I did next. But at the time, jet lag's tired, it made perfect sense. I, uh, I took my t-shirt off as well. <laughs> just to make it a bit easier for both of us, right? Now, I'm standing in the middle of Dr. Scott's office, uh, uh, completely, I say completely naked, I, I kept my socks on. 
I'm not a barbarian. You've got to maintain some dignity in these situations. Um, now, as, as the men here who agree with it, that they will attest, it's very difficult to know how to stand when you're naked in a stranger's office. Now, you're, you're quite a confident man, I know that. I know when you go in for your tappy-tappy, like, I imagine you go in with a bit of this, don't you? You kind of go... <laughs> do the gun thing down at the... Right? I haven't really got that in me, right? Not that, I mean, just, I haven't got... That doesn't matter. <laughs> I haven't really got it in me. So uh, I thought, well, how do I stand? Because it's, so I thought, what I should do, what I should do is, so that when he comes in, it's not all like, it's all not like, ah, or, um, I thought, what I'll do is I'll turn around and face the wall. So when he comes in, it's just like a bit of bum, just my bum. And then, like, he can see the bum, and then I can kind of like, Makes perfect sense, right? So I'm in position, I'm in position, feeling quite confident that this is the way I want to go. So I'm there, and while I'm doing this, I somehow catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror, and I realised I just looked a bit flirtatious. <laughs> hey, Doc. I didn't expect you to show up. <laughs> so I thought, I can't stand like that. So what I decided to do instead was I, went, I opted for the standard. I opted for the, what I like to call Englishman on a beach. I stood there like this. <laughs> and I waited for him to come back. And now, um, again, please don't judge me for this. I just want to share this with you. But I have no idea why I did this. Uh, it just, I think I was delirious at this point, standing in a stranger's office naked for that long. I maybe thought it would be funny, I don't know. But basically, he finally comes back in the room, of course not expecting to see any of this, because... <laughs> and for some reason, when he opened the door, I did this. <laughs> <Get in! laughs> and now I'm banned from Dr. Scott's office for life! <laughs> Not very fair. So many word differences. I wasn't given any of the phrase books. I had no idea. The first time I went into, I went into Tim Hortons. I, I'm leaving with my coffee, and the girl, the girl at the counter says, "Oi, don't forget to roll up your rim." <laughs> I thought I was being invited to a weird sex party. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I was actually scared to order a Boston cream after that. <laughs> And again, you would think that I was getting better now. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up to two and a half years here now. Two and a half years almost I've been here, and still I'm getting caught out. Literally, I would say it was three weeks ago, I was working on a project with some guys. At the end of the day, the guy said to me, he said, Oi, James, Oi, James, um, do you want to go and watch midget hockey? I said, you what? <laughs> he said, do you want to go and watch midget hockey? I said, yeah, I thought that's what you said. I said, I know, I know St. John's not very PC, <laughs> but that's a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> and then I thought about it and I said, well, you know what? You know, I've been struggling a bit to get into hockey. Midget hockey? <laughs> Hell yeah, sign me up! <laughs> now, are you all in on this? Are you, did you all know? I went to midget. You all know what happened? I went to watch midget hockey. Do you know this? No fucking midgets. <laughs> they don't do this to you in other countries. No, no. I went to uh, about 18 years ago. I was backpacking around Indonesia on my own because uh, I had no friends. Anyway, so it's not. I'm there. I'm walking down the street. A guy sees me and he goes, "Hey, crazy English, crazy English." I said, "Yeah." <laughs> He said, do you want to go and watch midgets wrestling? I said, hell yes. Not disappointed at all. <laughs> True story. Um, this is fun. 
if we're going to the ale house later. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I just want to say at this point, uh, uh, sincerely, thank you all for coming out tonight. This really does mean a lot to all of us uh, performing tonight, everyone here filming tonight. Um, I, I, I want to tell you something that happened. I was doing a warm-up show for this uh, on Monday at the St. John Theatre Company, and I was talking about the fact that, you know, that essentially my, my dream was always to live in a happy place, which obviously came true when I moved here. And then my dream was to, um, was, my, my dream was to play an arena. And, and, and tonight, my, my second dream has been ticked off. I have no, this is without question the greatest, the greatest night of my life. I mean, that's, you know. And uh, I, did this, I did the show, I did a rehearsal of the show, and at the end I came back on for a Q&A, and a guy put his hand up and he said, well now, you've realised both of your dreams. He goes, what, what's your next dream? What, what's, your, what, what's your dream now? And, and I thought it was a very good question. And I, I paused for a minute and, and thought about it, because I don't want to give a flippant answer. And uh, I thought of it, and I realised, I, I don't know how many people in this world can be lucky enough to say this, and I never thought in a million years that I would say this, but I thought, my dream, my number one dream, if I had one wish, a genie's wish, my dream would be for everything to stay exactly as it is right now. And that is not something that I ever thought I would say in my life. I just want to uh, carry on doing what I'm doing. This is, this is uh, a dream. I love living here. I love all of you. Um, I, I, I genuinely mean that. It was a, um, it was a beautiful moment. Um, and then I thought about it afterwards, and I thought, actually, I do have another dream, and I want to tell you what that dream is, right? I received something in the post uh, a few weeks ago which uh, uh, changed my life. It was something which basically, uh, as I mentioned, my, my, my biggest dream was to, was to live in a happy place, and that's where I am now. I'm in this beautiful city. I've never been happier. And then this arrived in the post, ladies and gentlemen. It's my permanent residency card for Canada. Thank you. Which uh, means... Which means I get to stay in this beautiful city forever. Um, I pulled this out, I was so happy, I was so excited, I was over the moon, and then my wife, she likes to cut me down, she pulled it out of my hand, and she said, yeah, that's great news, James. Shame there's a fucking expiry date on it. <laughs> um, uh, and I got this, I, I, I had a party, people said, oh, that's great news, James, that's great news that you, you've got your permanent residence card. That now means in four years, you can apply to be a Canadian. And I said, well, you know what? I said, that's wonderful, but I said, in all honesty, I, I've never really dreamt of being a Canadian. That's not a dream that I've had. I said, my dream for 15 years since I first came here was to be called a New Brunswicker. That's what I want. My dream is to be called a New Brunswicker. And I know, I know you have to earn the right to be a New Brunswicker, right? You earn the right. And that's why I've come here, that's why I'm making all these mistakes, I'm saying the wrong words, I'm doing everything wrong, I'm making all these errors everywhere I go, I'm making a fool of myself, because it's right, I have to ingratiate myself into your community. You built this beautiful thing, and you were kind enough to let this fucking idiot come in. So the least I could do is try and ingratiate myself, and I love it, because it's like Newfoundland, they're a bit keen to have you, aren't they? Right? It's not like Newfoundland, like in Newfoundland, they have this deal, it's like, oh, come on in, they're so desperate, come on in, kiss a cod, shot, shot a screech, you're in, right? New Brunswick, you earn the right to be a New Brunswicker. I mean, like, if you think about it, Newfoundland's a bit like the dog, right? You buy the dog at the pet store, you get the dog home, immediately it says, I love you, master, right? New Brunswick's more like the cat, isn't it? You get the cat home, you stroke it, and it looks at you as if to say, feed me for four years, then I might sit on your fucking lap. You earn the right to be a New Brunswick, and I'm going to earn the right. I'm going to do everything I can within my power to become a fully-fledged New Brunswick. So that in a few years, when any of you see me walking down the street, you don't go, there's that English idiot, there's the bloke that waved his dick at Dr. Scott, right? <laughs> there's the bloke that went to all the wrong places on TripAdvisor, there's the guy that made all these mistakes. I want you to see me walking down the street, and I know I've got a, it's going to take a few years, but I want all of you to see me and say, there he is. There's James, the new Brunswicker, and I'm going to do everything I can within my power to make that happen. I'll be honest with you, St. John, I want to make homemade wine. And not just that, I want to make homemade wine out of a blue plastic barrel that I stole before the pulp mill shut down.
Just for you, St. John, I made my own homemade wine. James Mullinger's homemade wine, and I don't know if you can read it, it's an award-winning maritime product, and it is indeed pear and pubic hair flavour. ladies and gents, is all of the other things to earn the right to be a New Brunswicker. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to drive a four-wheeler on a highway. <laughs> the wrong way. I need to know how my truck handles on hiking trails. I want to buy everything I need from Kijiji. I want to make jokes about new feeds. I want to talk incessantly about the weather. I want to wear head-to-toe camouflage just to go to Tim Hortons. <laughs> I want to think it's perfectly acceptable to pick up women at the Irving Big Star. <laughs> As an Englishman living in St. John, I want to live in a place that I can finally feel proud of my tea. <laughs> I want to shoot a moose without a fucking hunting license. <laughs> I want to sneak into Costco using my Blockbuster card. <laughs> I don't want to buy my fish from Sobeys, I want to buy it out the back of a pickup truck in Sussex. <laughs> my name's James Mullinger, and I am a New Brunswicker! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much indeed for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it, thank you. Uh, you make my dreams come true tonight. Anything is possible in St. John. If this idiot can sell this place out, anything's possible. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I genuinely mean it. You can find me any day of the week walking around Toby's. So uh, come and say hello. Thank you very much indeed. Let's hear one more time for all the amazing performers you saw tonight. I've been James Ballinger. You've been amazing. Thank you, St. John. I love you. And good night.